Hello, my wonderful people. Happy Easter to you all. Anywhere you are watching this video or coming across this platform, Linda's TV show for the first time. If you like what you are seeing or the kind of content we create here, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. This will enable you to know when we upload a new video. Here we react to all forms of videos. We educate, inform the members of the public about the happenings in the globe, especially what is happening in Nigeria and in Biafra land. I put a disclaimer that here we do not promote misleading information, hate speech, violence, or trying to instigate war. I seize this opportunity to appreciate the YouTube for creating this wonderful platform that we are using to bring this information across to you. And also, a call for self-determination is never a call for war. My great people of Biafra, anywhere you are watching, I greet you and I say happy Easter to you all. So, I want to present a video, a very interesting video, which myself, I am going to be watching the video together with you. You see, there is this adage in Igbo language that says, Onye furu oku kone rinse, ya chubaya, make wuhonye monye gato baya. You guys know Edwin Clark. You are going to watch two different videos. Interesting one for that matter. Edwin Clark that has been supporting everything bad. Now he is crying. Ever since the Nigerian military invaded their community, he is crying. And you will also watch our Prime Minister where he recounted all the things that he have achieved so far and the way forward so this video is very very interesting educative after watching you are free to criticize but let us do it constructively you are free to argue you are free to you know recommend you are free to contribute at this point in time your idea is highly needed a very good idea for that matter so let us watch the video and also like i said before Come to the comment section to air our mind and our opinion. Stay tuned. After watching, kindly share. If you haven't subscribed, kindly subscribe and God will bless you. What is going on today? The Biafra Liberation. The uh, records are there. We have done tremendously very well with your support. We have made history already with your support. The government structure is in place the uh the uh, uh you know all the government uh, institutions are all in place we've raised the biafra army we've raised the biafra defense forces we've been able to put the de facto government in biafra land functional we've been able to have all the uh, uh counties many districts state activated we've been able to uh vote and adopted the establishment of the biafra state police we've been able to unveil the biafra national id card we have also kick-started the biafra self-referendum all these things happening simultaneously within just one year plus and not only that we've also activated and unveiled the Biafra, Biafra coin. We have been able to also vote on the establishment of Bank of Biafra. We voted on the Federal Reserve, which will later, as we be contemplated, will later be called the Confederate Reserve, since we are practicing the Confederation, uh, you know, a Confederate state. We've been able to achieve all this, making sure that Biafra struggle is not only just a struggle, but the nation becomes reality. And on this note, we've been able to move the liberation of Biafra from awareness to a realistic restoration. But this realistic restoration, since we have been able to conquer the airspace the airwave of Biafra has been confessed by the Janjaweed terrorist uh, army chief. We are now taking it to the global level, to the global stage. The global stage in the sense that 
the U.S. Congress, United Nations, European Union level, that is our next target. And that's exactly what we are doing. We've already started that. Not that alone, we have also moving straight to getting recognition from many countries. That particular recognition is already on the pipeline. And we are expected to get at least five recognition before the declaration of Biafra. Coming later this year, November, December. And I want everybody to understand that what we are doing today is something that God has ordained. No spirit, no man will stop Biafra from becoming an independent state this year. I want you to understand that this independent state is not going to happen just a one-time declaration. What we are going to do is the declaration of the restoration of independent state of Biafra. And then after that, we start the process of defending it. The defense of this Biafra nation is not going to happen in one day. It may not happen in three months. It may not even happen in one year. It may not even happen in two years. But the process will begin immediately the pronouncement of the declaration of the restoration of Biafra here in Finland, as will be also consented by many delegates coming from all over the world, including some of you from Austria. This particular roadmap and template we have followed and it's our work for the Biafra government so far. I just want to take your mind a little bit back how we started where we are today. Today we have been able to establish many liaison offices across the world including in Austria and we expect that these liaison officers are representative of the Biafra Republic government in exile will increase as we forge ahead and get closer to the declaration of the restoration of independence state of Biafra this year. Everything we are doing today is only going to work for Biafra and not anybody else. We are not going to follow the path previous people or previous agitators has followed. We are also not going to follow the part that many other nations has followed that work for them. We have identified the roadmap that will work for Biafra, only for Biafra. Considering the fact that Nigeria is a very, very dangerous and corrupt state with the complicity and the very dangerous diversity that have made everybody that dare to speak for the people a scapegoat and a target for assassination. We have been able to defeat the fear by embarking on numerous civil disobedience since the kidnap of Mazin and Bikanu from Kenya. This particular civil disobedience that the Biafra government continued to push in Biafra territory has further shown and confirmed the delegitimization of Nigeria within Biafra land. Today, we are proving to the world when the time comes, the evidences are there that Biafra people have lost confidence in anything Nigeria. That Biafra people have chosen only the Biafra Republic of Mentineza as the only legitimate government that speak for them and fight for their interests. Any negotiation in any level and anywhere that Biafra government is not involved can never stand. You can't negotiate one-sided and expect peace to reign. The only thing that we lay a very good background for lasting peace, if there should be peace at all, must involve the Biafra Republic government in exile on the table. And that only part to peace is considering the fact that Biafra Republic government in exile has organized the ongoing self-referendum, ratification of this result will go a very long way in restoring peace and order. For the good of those who may have business interests in Biafra territory. Ignoring the Biafra Republic government in exile, democratic process. 
will backfire. As it stands today, we are not just fighting for freedom, we are also fighting to preserve our life, our culture, and the right to live. It is no longer about just uh, independence. No, we are now fighting for survival. We are facing extinction, annihilation, ethnic cleansing, genocide, sponsored by the Nigeria government, and being orchestrated and powered by the Nigeria terrorist army. Today, we have seen videos circulating on social media of the army having a badge that we are yet to confirm which country is that. We, are, we know that there are many mercenaries that have hired in the past. Most of those mercenaries were neutralized in Biafra territory as they come to kill our people. But today, the video that I have seen, which I am still investigating, shows there is a badge that looks like Hamas Palestinian badge, but I believe it may not be a Hamas badge. I believe it's one of those African neighboring countries. So it has come to the fact that the war has been brought to our doorstep. And those who will think that they are not going to support this Biafra today to defend our land against these vendors and murderers, you may be the next victim. It is the responsibility of every one of you, anywhere you are in the world today, to know that the only hope you have remains the Biafra Republic government in exile. And every other thing that comes with it, every other person that parade or group that parade themselves are free to do so, but must not interfere in the process that we have laid and the process we put on ground to see the restoration of independence state of Biafra starting from this year. I want everybody to understand that this struggle we left long time ago and army liberation is a process, a process that must be followed diligently, step by step. As we move forward to the global stage to put Biafra on a global discussion, we have also set the principle that is going to guide this step. We've also made sure that many contact has been established for the speed up of the recognition of Biafra government. And this process is ongoing. Not limited to using lobbyists, not limited to using international consultancy firm, not limited to using whatever mechanism and measures necessary and available to us to see the recognition of Biafra government in the few coming months. People of Biafra in Austria, you have been a very big part and very big player of what you see today, the success we've recorded today in the exile government. I remember when this whole thing started, it was as if the whole world have ended on the side of the Biafra people. We saw how the Nigeria government bragged why they blindfolded Mazin and Bikano in Abuja and every one of them were bragging and giving statement how Biafra hope has ended. They bragged that IPOB will no longer exist. Because there is something they know that many of you do not know. And that was the exposition that the so-called Chike Dozier made the other day. They said they have handed over the Eastern Security Network to governors and they are paying them. It is not a surprise because this is what we know. And there are many reasons. The decision we've taken today come with many, many reasons. The decision we took to make sure nobody will talk about Eastern Security Network again is something that is deeper than many of you can ever imagine. I remember when the chief of staff was sharing a message, a directive from me that nobody should mention from today, that time, Eastern Security Network, or what we have now is Barbara Liberation Army. Many of these criminals 
use it to do propaganda. They say, you see it, you see it, they have, they thought they have destroyed IPOB. Now, what Mazin and Dikano set up, they, know they want to destroy it. These are the people who, for the past three years, never talked anything about Eastern Security Network because they believe they succeeded in selling this young man to the governors in return for monetary compensation. And they never mentioned them. From year one, year two, everything was gone. All they did was to continue to expose the locations and camps of those they believe they knew who have turned against them when they know that these people have sold out. They did everything to you know, blackmail them and expose their location for them to be slaughtered like they slaughtered many people. They did not succeed. After two and a half years, they came back again to tell you that is Eastern Security Network. Before then, we've already seen what many of you did not see. One, the reason why Eastern Security Network remain banned today is because they have sold out and have given them to the Nigeria government. And for that reason, we will never allow them that name to be mentioned until Mazin Amdekano comes out. Two, is that for the fact that they are using the Eastern Security Network as a name to commit all manner of crimes and atrocities against our people, against their own colleagues, whom they trained together, died together, took oath together to preserve and defend our land. We see it as a sabotage of Mazin Amdekano because what they do is to use their name to commit crimes in order to put those crimes on the name of Mazin Amdekano as somebody who founded the founder of the Eastern Security Network. Three, because of the current situation of the justice system in Nigeria, where elephants can fly, we decided that anything that has to do with Eastern Security Network should be abolished to make sure nobody is using in the name of Mazin Amdekano created it to carry out the liberation of Biafra. Today we have done that. And what we have today is what we call the Biafra Liberation Army. So whatever that is going on with the Biafra Liberation Army and the terrorist state police or state-sponsored uniform men in Biafra land has nothing to do with Mazin Amdekano. But you see, the criminals continue to drag Eastern Security Network and IPOB to it. Why we continue to do clarification that the Biafra government has unveiled the Biafra forces, defense forces, which have taken responsibility in making sure that those who come to kill our women and children like the young man usually do, will not live to tell the story. Every day, they continue to tell these people to use Eastern Security Network. After three years, they came and gathered boys to snap pictures and snap videos and start sharing it on social media. And nobody was asking them. In 2021, when they say everybody should return their guns and their, their then gone, why did they do so? In 2022, none of these people talked about Eastern Security Network. In 2023, none of them talked about Eastern Security Network. What were they doing? Because it never existed. They thought they have sold everything. And those who know what was going on from the beginning immediately turned to autopilot. And they begin to expose them. They say, oh, you know, see who took what? ESN don't have camp there. You know, Kikwe, ESN don't have to, you know, worry. They begin to point camps where the, where the original Eastern Security Network has turned their back on them. Today, they did not succeed. We have fortified men with modern, sophisticated weapon to fight. And they have Matama forced to buy our liberation, liberation army. And by next October, November, December, it is no longer doing, going to be just Liberation Army. That will become the full-fledged Biafra Army. And that's where we are going. But before then, wonders will happen in Nigeria. We are not backing down. And uh, if you listen to the National Anthem of Biafra, there is a lot of deep message 
from the national anthem you just listening to. And like I said, this gun that we are picking up to defend our land can never ever go down until Biafra is defended and become an independent state. I want everybody to understand that we are not just living in the present, we are living in the future. While others were castigating, waiting for Biafra to fall, we planned ahead of them. Today, we have secured our land, others are being butchered. But during this time, the criminals that was piloting the affair of Biafra before was busy castigating every step we made. I want you to ask yourself today, especially those of you in Austria, if... Let's get your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, um, what, uh, what happened a few days ago is very shocking, very barbaric, wicked, and unforgivable. I think what is re required, really, the military, together with the communities, all of us, to take it as a task to look for these people who committed this murder. It's very, very important. In fact, I'm so sad when I heard that Lieutenant Colonel Ali was involved because on Thursday 14th morning, I spoke to him at 10.45 about my younger brother, dead younger brother, Colonel Bernard Clark, retired, who died recently and was to be buried on Friday. And for, to have the military burial, a tradition to a burial, I had to contact him. And he told me that he was in a vehicle that would speak to me later. only to hear that he was among. At that time, I thought he was speaking to, to me from Agbo in Delta State. There was one, another one, is Major B. I spoke to him in Ugele about the same thing on Wednesday. So I'm indeed very, very, very sad that we should lose such a person, such people. At a time, even in the Boko Haram war, we have never lost soldiers like that. We all uh, support Mr. President when he said the people should be looked for. And uh, these satellite robo towns along the Focados or River Niger and the Jaws villages and communities have known them for a very long time. Okuama is between Akubane, me, Akubane town and Okoloba town. About uh, 82 years ago, when I was in Standard 2, I attended the same school with um, boys from Okuama, boys from Okoloba, and boys from Akubane. So I knew the area very well. So I'm really, really, really sad that this should happen. Historically, they are the same um, ancestor. There was the, our ancestor called Me. I mean, I'm a main descendant who had children who left to Gobri in, in the Bayasa State and settled in the, along the river, Focados River. So most of the towns and villages along the Focados River, there were Many children. So there was the Kal Kaladama, who was the most senior among them. Then you have Oge. Hey, he was the founder of Okoloba, and he was also the father of Ehu, which uh, Barakolo, Okubama, Furukama, and Masoma. 
They are all descendants of me. But when two persons live to, uh, side by side, whether they are brothers or they are not, they are bound to have differences over land. So they have been having these cases for the past 50 years or 80 years. Nobody has gone to the extent of carrying out such type of heinous, uh, wicked uh, action. So I'm indeed very, very sorry that this should happen. Yeah. But we have a duty not allow this thing to escalate. All right. We must all put our heads together. I was very happy when I listened to the governor of Delta State of his involvement in this matter. Uh, and uh, l l let me see if I can come we in here. Uh, you know, as yeah, all, come in, come in. You know, as always, I like to call you Papa Clark. And Papa Clark, many thanks again for coming on the show. I know definitely this will hurt you so much talking about communities you've always known from your boyhood days and now this is what we're discussing at this point in time uh first we, we have two things on the plate now first to see how we can bring these communities back uh to uh, a peaceful uh living and second to see how we can get the marooning killers uh who have gone on the ground what best can you say to the our military uh, at this point in time in going about getting these people without, you know, getting uh, more collateral damage within uh, these uh, peaceful communities? Well, my appeal to our gallant soldiers is that they should temper, they should act, um, maturely and not to take the law into their own hands i know they are provoked we are all provoked but that's not enough they are innocent children pregnant women everywhere so as far as i'm concerned we should appeal to the military to take it easy they have all the te um, modern technology they should be able to fish out very soon those who committed these crimes. So it's not against the ordinary citizens. They should, one will be angry that such, such a thing did happen in a place. So one will not blame the army so much for what, whatever that must have happened. It's all collateral damages. What I'm saying, enough is enough. The, the military should sit back. We are all Nigerians. And uh, those who must have been responsible for this, there are not many. There are not many. Whoever hired them, wherever they come from, they should be fixed out. That should be the main duty of the army. And we must all, I think Nigeria should um, of these gallant soldiers by declaring a day for them with half mast all over the country. Officers and soldiers, innocent men, who went for peaceful settlement of, an, of a matter. We appeal to the military to take it easy that their own people, and they, these are some of the things they, they are expected to have, to encounter. They, are not, they did not die at war front. They key cold-blooded. So as far as I'm concerned, I will appeal to Mr. President, who is the Commander-in-Chief, to appeal to, also to appeal to the soldiers to take it easy while looking for the, uh, to the people who committed this heinous crime. Right. Uh, I'm sure the Nigerian uh, military are actually listening to you and they will take advice from, you know, a great uh, elder statesman uh, like yourself. What do you make of, uh, you know, insinuations that these killers may not be from the Niger Delta, likely to be foreign uh, mercenaries, almost, uh, you know, giving the 
you know, uh, insinuations that um, this must have been orchestrated, the killing of these soldiers. Well, that is difficult to, to believe. I do not think we should extend these things. Let us look at ourselves. I, I said I spoke to the, to the lieutenant colonel on Thursday, and he went to the place on Thursday and died. Well, except they had expressed information that they were going to visit uh, Kubama. Otherwise, nobody knew that they were going there. So for people to come from outside, to relay them, to surround them, is a matter we should investigate. We can't rule anything out, but at the same time, let's look at ourselves. The leaders of the various communities but we brought together. Find out from them. Nobody should be treated as a sacred cow. We are one. Perhaps I may say this. I am an Ijom man. I am an Urobo man. And I will be the last person to allow this type of matter to generate to, to a situation whereby we have intercommunal fracas or fights. We've had this before. They have been, uh, these three communities, they have been in court. Over the years, they win, they lose, they live together, they marry together. So if two men or two persons from the two communities are fighting over land, the, they should, the, the governor should look into that matter, bring these people and ask them questions. That's why I say nobody will be treated as a second cow. They, be, they must have leaders in both communities. So, so I, again, I jump in here, Papa Clark. What, what are you getting? What's the vibe you're getting from the community leaders and the governor specifically, just even before... Uh, the uh, very brutal killings of these uh, gallant soldiers. Uh, on, on what on what matter? This very matter? Uh, uh, yes, on this very matter, were there moves by the community leaders no, and this even very the government? Matter, no. the, listen, this, listen, this question of Okubama and Okoloba dispute was not known by many people. It's just a matter between two communities. And the governor said he went into it. It was not known by many of us until the, this uh, wicked event took place. So nobody knew about it, so there was nothing we could do. As I said, they have always been in court. I'm, I'm aware of that. And they've been living together. They do things together. So we were not aware that it was going to take a, uh, 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 take a different turn. There are matters to be investigated. Where did this thing happen? Yeah, the military should find it out. Where were they waylaid? Where were they, were they uh, shot dead? We must know all these, uh, all these facts. We cannot be saying that, uh, did they die in the river or on the ground? These are issues to be discussed, to be investigated. Right. I'd like to I get think your, the, your, the way I think about it. Yes, uh, your reaction, Park Lad, to, uh, you know, s uh, in some quarters, uh, many are questioning the propriety or otherwise of uh, military involvement in resolving civilian issues like the land tussle. Uh, conflict in the Okwama area. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Is it okay for the military to intervene at such levels or is it something that should ordinarily be left to the police as some have said? We in Nigeria, we, we are people of double standard. We use the army. When we are using them, we don't know that this is not their job. They are Nigerians. If they, they are told that such 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 is happening in a place and they went out to maintain peace, 
This is a matter for the police, but if they were not there, what would happen? So, but this is not the time, my, my dear, to talk about whether the army should have done this or should have done that. This is not the time. The same army has been used by everybody. Governors are not supposed to have a, a, a military men in their houses. People are not supposed to have military people in their houses. Everybody have the army. They are looking for their own safety, their own security. When things are wrong, then you blame them. Why? This is not the time to talk about whether the army had done this or done that. Whether it was their job. not the, Because it, this is a prior call to the police. Let us examine our police. What are they doing? With all this happening, we have never heard of any police action. So these are matters government should look after. But just now, we are only involved in how to solve the, this wicked action of some uh, unpatriotic Nigerians. Well, I think, uh, well, at this point, we would like to uh, thank you for your time, uh, Papa Clack. Uh, specifically, we understand how pained this is to you, knowing full well that uh, you were also able to establish contact with at least two of these uh, mm -hmm. gallant officers just uh, some hours before the unfortunate yes, incident. I did, yeah. I did, I did. Yeah. Well, we must all sympathize with them. As the governor of Delta State mentioned, we all have a duty to support the families, to see that these people are given uh, a befitting barrier. As Nigerians who died in active service, we should be friendly with them. We should appeal to them. This is not the time to criticize the army. We have been using them, wrongly or rightly. So thank you very much. I think, as I told you earlier, these people are brothers and sisters. They have lived together for years, for thousands of years. They will settle their problem. We should not bother about it. We should bother about who killed these boys. That is my, my own question. Then forget about the two communities, their dispute. and It will not escalate to other communities. I assure you that. We have been making investigation. We've been talking to people. So thank you very much. All right. We have to say thank you very much, uh, Chief Edwin Clark, uh, speaking to us on the Okwama Robo uh, situation where 17 military men were killed. Thank you so much for joining us. Just excuse me. Yes. Just excuse me. Yes, please. The name Okubama is an Ijon name. Money, a, a town with money. That will tell you Okubama is not an Urubu name. It's an Ijon name. I know that from the time I was a young man, when I was living around there. Okoloba is an Ijon name. So that's why I said they are brothers. Right. There will be peace. I am the chairman of the board of trustees of INC. And I was very happy. Hello, my wonderful people. As we are finished watching this interesting video, please, I want to see your comment, your contribution, your opinion in the comment section. Like I said earlier, let us do it constructively. Tell me what you think about this uh, video that you have just watched and also about the platform. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please remember to subscribe, put on your notification bell, share this video and remain blessed.